Today's story is Hats Off to Mr. Pockles by Sally Lloyd Jones, illustrated by David Litchfield. For Mr. Pockles, going without a hat was as unthinkable as going around without any pants on. He had a hat for every occasion. An eating cornflakes hat, a having a little sit down hat, a drinking cups of tea hat, an in the bath hat, a going to bed hat. His only sadness was that he couldn't wear all of them at once. There was one hat he never wore because it was too special and he was saving it for best. Maybe it was because he was too busy with his hats to go out and meet people. Or maybe it was because he was terribly shy. But whatever the reason, poor Mr. Pockles had no friends. Sometimes he was a little lonesome. But then he only had to think of his millions of hats and pop one on. It's funny how wearing a hat cheers a personage up, said Mr. Pockles, until one morning when it didn't. It was hat day at the Pandapolitan Club and Mr. Pockles desperately wanted to go and show off all his hats. But only pandas were allowed, and pandas, as everyone knows, are very black and white. Either you are a panda or you are not. So to cheer himself up, Mr. Pockles decided to go to Treat House instead to buy himself a bun. I shall wear my jaunty hat with a friendly feather, he said thoughtfully. To his delight, when he got there, Mr. Pockles found it was Bun of the Month Day. The buns this month were taste delicious fluffy fudge bonnets. As he was waiting in line for his bun of the month, who should walk in but a panda? It is I, Lady Coco Fitztulip, she announced as she sailed to the front of the line. Lady Fitztulip was a fourth generation San Francisco Panda and very important and even had streets named after her. She was wearing the most unusual hat Mr. Pockles had ever seen. He couldn't stop staring at it. I'm late for hat day at the Pandapolitan Club, she cried, waving an invitation around. I must start my spring in style. The shop went silent. Everyone felt depressed. They wanted to start their spring in style too, but they didn't have any hats and they weren't pandas. Meanwhile, certain baby bunnies who'd been waiting in line a long time and were awfully hungry, mistook Lady Fitztulip's hat for the bun of the month and started eating it. Before anyone realized they'd eaten the bananas, the grapes were halfway through the pineapple and had started on the chopsticks. My ancestral hat, Lady Fitztulip screamed. Help, help! It was too late. The ancestral hat fell to the floor, demolished. The baby bunnies leaped off the hat and vanished under their mother's skirt. 
Whatever shall I do now? Lady Fitztulip wailed. It's hat day, and I don't have a single. She crumpled into a heap. Everyone rushed around. They picked up her bag. They sat her down. Mr. Pockles even gave her his bun. Most kind," said Lady Fitztulip. "Thank you, sir. You're most welcome, Madame," said Mr. Pockles. My aunt made hats, you see," she explained through a mouthful of bun. "Oh, how lovely!" said Mr. Pockles. But they were all lost in the earthquake. "Oh, how horrible!" said Mr. Pockles. And now I don't have a single hat, and she began loud sobbing again. Everyone hung their heads. Mister Pockles blinked. It was quite the most awful story he'd ever heard. But then, Mister Pockles jumped up. It is I, Mister Pockles, he announced. Lady Fitztulip, we haven't a moment to lose. Hold on to your hats, everyone. And even though they didn't have any hats to hold on to, there was nothing to do but follow Lady Fitztulip and Mister Pockles all the way to Hat House. Mister Pockles ran upstairs. Dear Lady Fitztulip," he said, opening a hat box. "This is. It was his special hat. It was so beautiful, it made all the air go out of the room. He put it on her head, and showed it to her in a mirror. Oh," she gasped, "Mr. Pockles." And before Mr. Pockles knew what was happening, Lady Fitztulip picked him up and hugged him. She turned to the door. We haven't a moment to lose. She dropped Mr. Pockles. Hold on to your hats, everyone. Where were they going? To the Pandapolitan Club. Lady Fitztulip cried. Everyone's eyes grew huge. Didn't I say, friends of pandas are invited too? Friends," said Mr. Pockles. "Yes, of course." Mr. Pockles stood there stunned, as Lady Fitztulip chose the perfect hat for him. The room filled with cheers. Mr. Pockles looked around and laughed. Your turn, everyone," he declared. "Choose your hats." And they did. Even the sun put his hat on, and so it was that Lady Fitztulip got a beautiful new hat, and Mister Pockles went to Hat Day with all of his hats at once. But even better, with all of his new friends. Just before they entered the Pandapolitan Club, Lady Fitztulip turned, raised her hat, and cheered. Hats off to Mister Pockles.